you've you've heard about what uh, the insider said. Her name is uh, uh, Anna, Anna Stanley. What she said has gone on at this counter-terrorism course. And I wonder what your thoughts are on what she's revealed. Well, the purpose of education is to get people to think intensively and to think critically. And I think that's probably what the course has tried to do. Now, one of her criticisms, for example, in a Fathom article is that uh, they were asked the question, what is terrorism? Now, that is a valid question. She said there was no definition. The Brits do have a definition. It, under the Terrorism Act 2000, it is either a political, religious, ideological, racial act. What is a valid question internationally is there is no internationally uh, validated uh, answer on what is terrorism, which is why, for example, we fail to prosecute those in an international court who have what we would call crimes in Syria, um, ISIS, for example. So think critically for practitioners like me the key thing is metrics she doesn't Anna, come up with any metrics so i can tell you all the metrics about um how many uh, right-wing people are in prison how many islamists are in prison she doesn't give those uh, those are the key things and she she goes into really um uh, opinions and there are alternative opinions facts and alternative of facts but i can give you the true metrics well, that's go on, what do. we do give us a few give us a few of the these metrics world. that you're talking about what what would you like to give us well for example she says that there's a an undue emphasis on the extreme right wing um terrorism now uh, that is rising but for example the number of prisoners in in the prisons at the moment is 65% islamists 27% um, extreme right wing and the other percentage of those from other ideologies, including, for example, we've now got conspiracy theory ideologies. Um, the number of people who have warranty against them, that is intrusive surveillance, is somewhere around 20% extreme right wing, 80% Islamist. And generally, those figures are between sort of 60 to 80% for Islamist and uh, and vis a vis for the extreme right wing on all the metrics that we look look at. Uh, Edmund Fitton-Brown, what do you make of uh, Anna Stanley's inside view, or you might even call it a whistleblowing on what's been going on at these so-called counter-terrorism courses? I, I think it's good that she's done it. Um, I think some of these courses may not be as well designed as they could be. Um, I do want to say, you know, King's is a very prestigious and very reputable uh, university, and they do some great work. So, I mean, I think... I think to some degree it would be unfair to uh, tar, to tar them uh, with a few lapses on a course. But I think the thing that concerned me uh, most of all was that there had been uh, an apparent sort of um, talking down of, 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 um, of, of the Shawcross findings. And that goes back to what the general was just saying, that um, the great majority threat in the UK is from Islamist extremists. Uh, and yes, there is a, an extreme, uh, I, I, there are various types of terminology that people use, but I think white supremacist is a reasonably good one. Uh, there is a problem of that kind in the UK, and it should be taken seriously. But I worry that there may be some systematic talking down of the Islamist threat. Well, I mean, if, if, if Anna Stan is to be believed, that's exactly what happened, Mike. Mm. Well, I think the point about this is not whether you're defining terrorism in a, in a, in a sort of an educational setting. These are civil servants who are mm. being sent on a course, which I don't think they're choosing to do. They're being told that they have to go and do it. And the main thrust of what Anna Stanley's saying, we've got her on my show tonight, so we'll find out for sure. But the main thrust of what she seems to be saying is that there's clearly a politicisation of terrorism now in this world. So we've got people on the sort of what you might call the woke side asking whether Hamas are really a terrorist organisation, but well, I'm sorry, they are a terrorist organisation, and then asking whether you might consider Israel to be a terrorist state. Well, no, actually. You know, so when you see these kinds of questions being posed and these kinds of ideas being propagated, what you're really seeing uh, is the academic world, which is pretty woke, looking at the way that people are reacting to what's happening in the Middle East right now and taking a political view of it and saying, well, it didn't all start on October the 7th. Well, I don't think our civil servants need to be given that kind of, you know, re-education, frankly. I mean, let's bring it, uh, Edmund into, into this. So this is one, one of the things that Anna says. She says, uh, all the civil servant participants were given a topic to research and present. One attendee said her brother had been radicalised and fought in Syria for Islamic State, ISIS. Few, I thought. At least one person here will understand the problems of extremism. Her presentation was about the UK's counter-terrorism strategy, Prevent. She argued... 
Prevent is inherently racist because it focuses on Islamist extremism. The mere mention of Islamist extremism makes Muslims, and I quote, feel uncomfortable, she argued. Her brother would most certainly have agreed. Edmund, what do you make of that? Well, I, I, I think she has a very fair point. Um, it's not necessarily wrong that someone like that should have been participating in the course, but some of the things that she said seem to have remained uh, as if they were rather rather uh, sympathetic um, to, uh, to, to the Islamists, to the radicals, and that is problematic. I mean, it's not just problematic, isn't it? I mean, what is the point of being summoned as a civil servant to a course on counter-terrorism if you can't say what the greatest terrorist threat is? If you, I mean, it's more than problematic, isn't it? It means that the, the course is so turned in on itself, so self-regarding, so convoluted, and so, I don't often use the word woke, that it's absolutely worthless. It doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Or, Major, what do you see when you, when you hear what I've just read out? Well, the Counterterrorism Command and the agencies follow the threat, not an ide ideology. They don't care if you're talking about left-wing woke or right-wing uh, populism. They follow the threat. And also, in terms of the prevent strategy, they don't police thought. They police the risk of violence. So practitioners follow the threat absolutely, which is why the metrics I gave you of why there's 80% warrants against Islamists, 20% against right-wing extremists uh, are, are the case. Now, the prevent itself, there is a, has always been a strong prevent, prevent lobby, and that's why Shawcross was brought in to try and end that sort of debate. The Islamists themselves have always said that uh, prevent is racist. It's not. It applies to war because it follows the threat. They said it criminalizes Muslims. It doesn't. It tries to prevent people being criminalized. They say it's spying. It's not. It's to do with safeguarding. And they say it violates human rights, and it doesn't. It's compliant with e ECHR. So the prevent, prevent lobby actually want us to try and change our laws because they want to try and Islamize society more, get rid of counter-terrorist legislation so they can fulfill a greater remit for Salafist jihadist uh, Sharia law in the UK. So, Mike Graham, apart from getting major mm. uh, chips to, 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 to supervise the course and, and, and dictate the curriculum and make sure that everybody realises what the metrics mm. are, what, what can be done? What's Anna Stanley coming onto your show tonight well, to say? We're going to ask her how sort of widespread this kind of practice is, because I think we all know, for example, one of the reasons the Home Office is not fit for purpose currently is because nobody in the Home Office, as far as we know, who works there, wants to carry out government policy on immigration. They think that it's wrong. Therefore, they decide to put a sort of uh, a spanner in the works in the same way that some people from the Foreign Office, Department of Defence, we're all at this seminar, they're all being told, well, maybe it's problematic, that's that word again, mm. um, about uh, to call Hamas a terrorist organisation. Well, it isn't. You know, I think in the end you have to call a spade a spade. We'll be asking asking Anna, you know, how much of this is rife inside of the civil service and how many people are actually signing up to basically looking at Israel as a terrorist state and looking at Hamas uh, as freedom fighters, which is the, the phrase that they used. Edmund, do you have a problem with them finding it, as, as Mike says, problematic to call Hamas terrorists? I do, yes. Hamas is a terrorist organisation. It's, uh, it's, it's legally recognised as such in the United Kingdom and it's appalling attacks on Israel on the 7th of October uh, revealed it to be one of the most brutal and depraved terrorist organisations in the world. So, so civil servants summoned Major to attend a course at which they are told, really, it's problematic to call Hamas terrorists because some people will see them as freedom fighters. Well, that is true. There certainly is a huge phalanx of the world that does see Hamas as freedom fighters. Doesn't mean that that's what our civil servants need to be taught at this course, is it? Well, if I was on the course, no, you'd I, push back instantly because it's the Home Office, of course, which uh, came up with a prescription bill for both the mil uh, military and political wings of Hamas. That is to support Hamas or show uh, all their, their flags or things on the streets would mean that that's a, a criminal offence. So if that were to be said, and I don't know if we've got any evidence of that, people who are on the course should push back instantly on that. Mm -hmm.